Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a quick top five list. So I want to talk about my top five favorite fantasy novels. So this is not a tier list or anything like that. We're just kind of going, going to go through my top five favorite fantasy novels and talk a little bit about each one. So I'm going to try to keep it entirely spoiler free, but there might be some context that I might end up spoiling because some of my favorites are like the last book in the series. So I'm going to try to be really careful with that, but just in case, I want to give the warning. So yeah. All right. With that being said, please make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Got to get that support going there some kind of way along with, you know, up in that engagement and if you're interested you can check out the patreon but if you can't support the channel in that way then please of course leave a like and subscribe to the channel and of course please leave a comment i would love to know you all's favorite um top five favorite fantasy books i want to see how they compare to mine do we have any um you know are any of our list the same you know anything like that so yeah please leave me your list in the comments down below and as always let's begin all right, so let's go ahead and get started. And the very first one on my list is a book that I do not have a physical copy for yet. And I am like going insane. I need to get a physical copy of it. But my first um, one on the list, number five, is Superpowered's Year Four by Drew Hayes. So I love the Superpowered series. And I've talked about it on the channel mul uh, multiple times before. But it doesn't seem to get really any traction. It's odd to me that in the fantasy community, there's so few people who are into like fantasy superhero stuff. So like that, I thought that was kind of fascinating. But um, I think Superpowers is probably the best um, fantasy superhero type series I've ever read. Because it's more than just the people with the powers. It's more than just superhero fair. It's very much like slice of life. And it's very much focused on character development. So it has all the great action and the fun power use and exploration of how their powers work and stuff like that. But the core focus of it is really learning about these people and who they are in the context of the world that they live in and everything around them. So it's very, very much a slice of life type series, but just with, you know, the most awesome frosting on top being superhero stuff. So I really, really like this story. I love the where every character's character arc culminates to. And I think it's probably one of the best um, culminations and, you know, finales of any series I've read. It's like really, really, really good. And I can't recommend it enough. And I'm going to kind of keep it pretty much vague because otherwise I'll end up spoiling stuff about the series. So, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to number four. So number four, number four is The Black Prison by Brent Weeks. So this is the first book in the Lightbringer series and it is really, really fascinating. I love it so much. It is exactly the type of first book in the series that I love because it immediately sucked me into the story. I was immediately intrigued with all the mysteries that were set up and the, um, the hook of the world building and magic systems is what really, really um, grabbed me because I love world building and magic systems. So the introduction to this type of magic system and stuff in this book, like from page one essentially is what immediately piqued my interest in the entire series granted the series itself ends in such a way that i don't really care for but the um pretty much the entire series is very enjoyable up until that very last little bit but i really really dig the black prism as the beginning of a series it sets up such a fun mystery and like it lays the groundwork for some really cool world building and magic system usage and our main characters kip and gavin they're so fun and they're so completely different so the story is almost a ya because one of the main characters is a teenager but the other main character is an adult so it kind of lives in this perfect little gray area and it just is unique in a way that I haven't experienced before actually not before or since quite frankly I haven't read anything with two concurrent protagonists in that same kind of a way um, so it's, it's, it still remains like it still has that point for uniqueness, I guess. It still remains unique, you know, as far as my experience in that regard. So, yeah, number four definitely has to be The Black Prism by Brent Weeks. All right, next up is number three. And number three is a book that I do have a physical copy of. It is The Last Olympian by Rick Riordan, the final book in the Percy Jackson series. So The Last Olympian is, again, another one of these like great culminations to a story. It's a great, great ending to the overall series of Percy Jackson. I mean, it's not truly an ending to the series because... Um, the like the characters live on and they keep going and they show up in other books that Riot and writes. But as far as the five book arc that is the um, Percy Jackson and the, and the Lightning Thief series or whatever, um, it this is the ending of it and I think it's brilliant. It like 
it pretty much pulls <laughs> It pretty much pulls no punches in terms of the mythology lore and the mythology like magic system in the way in which it uses it. Like the culmination of the main story arc is really, really well done. And I love the use of the different elements of mythology. It's just, it culminates so well. Like every character has a great arc and there's some twists in there that I didn't see coming. And there's some usages of lore type things that are done in such a unique way that I haven't seen before that just kind it leaves this like it's just it's such a great ending i just i love it so much and i think rick riordan's work is like really really well done and i really hope that the tv show does last long enough to so we can get to this book because it's so good it's just so good it's so good it's so good all right that's why it's my number three because it's really 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 good and i really like it and it i was reading it pretty much at a time when i was probably in the perfect demographic for it so it like really hit me hard when i first read it so that first read has colored my impression on it for all these years since so yeah number three is the last olympian by rick riordan all right so number three number three has to be my first intro into proper grimdark and is definitely my favorite book in the grimdark subgenre and that is the blade itself by joe abercrombie i love this book so much like oh my god so much some of the most intriguing morally gray characters i have ever encountered ever like glockta is just so oh, he is so fascinating like i love him so much but i despise him like to death like, oh my god, there's some characters in here that you would love to read about, but will absolutely hate their guts for their actual actions. And I think that is such a cool dynamic to create. Like, it seems to be, like, kind of a difficult one to create because you often lean in one direction or the other. Like, where people will completely forgive anything they've done because they're so cool and charismatic, kind of like Kelsier from Stormlight, or from uh, Mistborn. And... But in here, um, Abercrombie like strikes this perfect line of where you really enjoy the character, you really want to read more about them, but you completely despise them for some of their actions. And he does this with multiple ah, sorry, he does this with multiple characters, but he does them in different ways and to different degrees. So it's not like you have multiple characters that are all the same shade of gray that are exactly the same level of charismatic um, and despicable. So he does it in different ways and then have different attributes that will make them either despicable or interesting and enjoyable to read but like he mixes it up but each one of them are totally morally gray and are somewhat despicable while being very fascinating and fun and like the fact that he's able to do that with multiple characters all in the same story while keeping the story itself and the plot that same level of gray and like fascinating at the same time is just it's a feat. It really is. This is like, I mean, granted, it's my intro to Grimdark, so I have a total bias by it being my first, but oh my goodness, it's the best. Like, I've read uh, Powder Mage and a couple other things that are considered Grimdark as well, but this still just like is like, like head and shoulders above it. Like, it's even hard to describe. I can barely articulate it. The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie is just so good. I definitely recommend it. So that's why The Blade itself is my number two, my second favorite fantasy book, period. It is my first favorite grimdark book, but it's my second favorite book or fantasy book, period. So I really love it. I really recommend it. It's really good. And it is so near and dear to my heart. I got to get some horror cover copies. So yeah, let's go ahead and move on to number one. All right. And number one, my absolute favorite fantasy novel to date is words of radiance by brandon sanderson so if anyone knows me or anyone who's uh, watched this channel for any period of time this probably won't surprise you at all because i have glazed this book like nothing else so, like i have sang the praises of this book like from the hilltops over and over and over again i absolutely adore words of radiance it is without a doubt my favorite cosmere book my favorite brandon sanderson book and definitely my favorite fantasy book period so i've kind of vacillated on this idea i didn't want to like you know stake a flag in the idea of what is my favorite because like there's so much i haven't read so it's hard to really say like you know my favorite or whatever so I was very hesitant to like stake a claim on a true favorite, but I guess I just have to because I love this book so much to a near irrational degree. Like I absolutely adore it. And I, I really can't think of any other book in fantasy or any other genre really that I enjoy it as much as this one. Like I've listened to the graphic audiobook, I've listened to the regular audiobook, and I've read this paperback and 
every version of it is great. <laughs> like, it's just so well done. But I also, like, have a weird bias in that I love sequels to things. Like, I tend to, like, my favorites of anything will almost always be, like, the first sequel. Like, you know, the, um... <sighs> I don't know, like second, I, I hate the Harry Potter is the thing about my head, but like second Harry Potter movie. Like I like that one more than I like the first one, like that kind of thing. I tend to like sequels more than the original because um, like the magic and that kind of stuff is typically established and we're now just using it. And this has one of the greatest sequences ever in terms of characters getting used to their abilities and stuff and using them. I think it's it's so cinematic. It's so well done. It's beautiful. The character arcs, the way we get some culmination of some arcs while we get the beginning of other arcs. We get like a great um, kind of midpoint, not even midpoint, but we get um, great continuation of arcs. And then just the world building, the lore crafting, the magic system exploration. Like, oh my God, this book has everything. This book basically kind of set the standard for me in what I look for in fantasy even though i've been reading fantasy most of my life this book has set the bar and has changed all the standards for me essentially so anytime i'm um i mean i don't really do ratings on my channel but anytime i'm trying to rate a book i will basically always compare it to how words of radiance made me feel did that book um, come anywhere near close to what this book made me feel and then that will basically decide where it exists on my uh ranking list i guess so um I guess I'll go ahead and end this by saying maybe going forward, I will use like a star system, like five stars or whatever, because this book is five stars and this is going to be the standard. So anything I give a rating to like that will basically be a direct comparison to this book, in my opinion. So yeah, that's why Words of Radiance is my number one. It is the best book in the Cosmere, in my opinion. It's one of, it's Brandon's best book, period, in my opinion. And it is the best fantasy book that I know I have read since I've been reading fantasy. Because, like, if there's a book that I could literally read cover to cover endlessly, it's this one. Without a doubt. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's go ahead and end the video there. That's my type five favorite fantasy books. Let me know in the comments down below. What are your top five? Let's see if we have any that match up. Let me know some of the reasons that you've chosen, like, your number one or whatever. So, yeah. Let me know about that in the comments down below. And please don't forget to support the channel by leaving a like or um, leaving a like and a comment or subscribing to the channel. And if you're interested, please check out the Patreon. The link is in the description. So, as always, I will talk to you all next time. Peace.